Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This Thatter the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month. We'll video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. Excelsior! That's right, kids. The day, the day you thought would never come, the day some of you have been dreading, will help us. Welcome back to the 250th episode of the Ultimate Spider Cast. I am Phil. Joining me, as always, that menace throwing her pumpkin bombs uh, everywhere. It is in the desert. <laughs> That's right, kid. So, I'll give you an early preview of our ho- our uh, Gobble Gobble Month, yes. And for our big 250th anniversary episode, we're going to talk all things Norman Osborn. We have a few issues picked out, like amazing, uh, so a couple early appearances, Amazing Spider-Man 14, 39 and 40, Untold Tales of Spider-Man 25, and I'm sure we'll get into throwing blondes off bridges and all that good stuff. 250, break off the confetti. <laughs> Yay. That's right. And you didn't even leave us any feedback, Ray. How dare you? Hey, you know, we just have to have an intervention. It's fine. You know, we'll, we'll work on that later. No, you know how we get feedback? We'll do it subliminally. We just, uh, we have Silver to... Sable. Silver Sable. Silver, oh. Silver Sable. <laughs> <laughs> Tigra? Tigra? Ah, uh, but, uh. Or no, what did he message the other day? Tombstone? Uh, yeah. Tombstone? <laughs> oh. Moon Knight better than Batman? <laughs> oh, we somewhere, said... Somewhere in Australia, the shackles on the back of his neck just <laughs> I think it was last time or the time before we did mention the Tombstone episode because he did te- uh, message me and put an episode on Tombstone on Capes. Yes. Yes, I'm in. <laughs> no, I was going to say, if we want constant feedback for Ray, I think we need to start paying for ads on Marvel Snap. <laughs> Too rich for my blood. I know. <laughs> That's the way you're getting his attention. So, what can we say about Norman freaking Osborne besides the prerequisite drop? Oh, of course. Uh, my okay. fetish is to get touched by a white man with cornrows. I'm just saying. In 2023, when they if they are not going to cast uh, recast Willem Dafoe, I'm just saying he needs to be a passe blanc man. He needs to be. That, that, that's the only way that's gonna work. Oh, he needs Maybe to be- somebody from New Orleans, uh, like you know, like a vampire um, interview with a vampire. Oh, uh, well, I was gonna say, so Defoe needs to be like the next J.K. Simmons, and you know, just needs to be cast. He's as- multiversal constant, babes. Ca- yes, cast as the goblin and everything, even if they would do it like animation or something. Yep, yep, that's just gonna ha- how it has to be now. I don't uh- make the rules; the fandom does. <laughs> <laughs> the multiverse of fandom does. But yeah, I mean, the the character of Norman Osborn, I believe this is what uh, the straw that broke the uh, back of Steve Ditko and uh, made him decide to leave because the identity of the Green Goblin, which they kept in mystery. This was the original Goblin mystery, kids. Uh, yeah, we all see. That's the thing. We always have a mystery about the Goblin, and it's never good. <laughs> never. It's never what we want. It never makes sense. It's a tradition that we just kind of got stuck with. It, it's not that mysterious. Gobble gobble. <laughs> uh, but yeah, because you know, as it turned out, Stanley wanted it to be someone you know connected to Peter Parker, and I think was it wasn't Ditko was like, nah, I just want it to be some random guy. Yeah, that's the thing. Everything doesn't have to be connected, but it is Marvel, and as we know, everything is super connected. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I always, I, I don't know, I always uh, attribute that to like the last like twenty years or so that like, oh, they always try to connect everything. But now, I guess, even as far back as the 60s, they were trying to do that. It does, like, I think it it, it, it detracts when it's personal. Like, I, I get, you know, with great power comes great responsibility, as best said by Pa Kent, not necessarily Uncle Ben. <laughs> but, um, just keeping the Charlie Esther spirit alive, that's all. Um, but yeah, like, it, it's okay, it is what it is, but I think just the randomness of life is, yeah. in the chaos of just randomness is more... I don't know, effective. It's just like, why, if they ever try to make the, like, in the movies when they make Joker related to 
like the killing of the Waynes. It's like, no, please no. stop. No. <laughs> and again, I don't know if they think they have to do that for like movie audiences and stuff. But it's it, the worst part of the adaptation. Yeah. Honestly. And again, it's like what happened to just being good for the sake of being good? It's AKA the flash before. Yes. Know, ever, yeah. Even though I love the story, I get it. But like now everyone has to have trauma or something. Yeah. Yeah. Although he's got enough trauma. It's like, it's, it's his best friend's dad. Well, like, I know. It's it's just so much. It is so much. Although they, I mean, I think in hindsight, and you know, they kind of retconned more uh, into that because at this point, as I mean as we'll see, you know, he gets unmasked, and it's like, oh, you, you're the dad of the kid I go to school. I just started going to school with, you know. That's yeah. Yeah. And now it's like Harry's been his best friend for like literal decades upon yeah. decades. So it's just like, ooh. well, again, we gave Gwen more importance after her death. Yeah. Which I I'm starting to think maybe we shouldn't have. As much as I, I love you know, as much as I love Spider Ghost, that's my Gwen Stacy. Yeah, but but, um, but the original Gwen Stacy. Yeah, I mean, she she was whiny and it's fine. You know, she's your first love. It's fine. They're never perfect. Well, not really even her his first first love technically, but you know what I mean. Well, again, you know, just you know, I think it cranks it up a notch. You know, when they try, when die in a tragic way and stuff. Yeah, it's like and. It, yeah. And if uh, we haven't retconned that part of Sin's past, too, it's like, I don't think they ever did it. So he's like, no! <laughs> how, how dare you see blocking it's, Norman? Yeah, it, it, it's a thing, though. It's like, ugh, so many retcons. Like, and that, that's just the nature of comics. You kind of have to go with it. But it's like, at, at some point, you have to stop retconning, or you just completely ruin the story. And I think that's where we are with Norman Osborn. Like, trying to make him a good guy, and like, saying he actually didn't do the thing that, I mean... Yeah. Sometimes you gotta stand in your truth and, and turn into the skid. And I just I don't know why they didn't with Norman Osborn. I mean, they, he has no fans. Like, let a villain be a villain. Let him ham it up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, again, in the twenty teens too, they tried to make him like a like the Marvel Universe's problem and try to make him like the next Lex, Lex yeah. Luthor. Yeah. And that that doesn't work because. Spider Man is not Superman. As much as much much to chagrin of Marvel, Spider Man is not on that playing field that just inspires the whole uh, existential dread of a billionaire, like a, a alien showing up that is like better than you, or just a person showing up that is better than you that is called the Man of Tomorrow. Like I listen, you know Lex Luthor, that's my guy. I, I totally mm-hmm. get his psyche and his beef with Superman, right? Norman and Spider Man, like a go- what's a goon to a goblin? But Spider Man is a spider. So what's a goblin to a spider? Like, how is that your arch nemesis? It doesn't make sense. Shouldn't it be like a a boot or something? Gobble gobble. <laughs> like, where's Boot Man? You know what I mean? Like, a fly swat or something? Yeah. Yeah, like, mm, and so like, ugh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, when we get into these first couple early appearances, yeah, it's uh, it's clear they didn't really know what they were doing. The goblet, yeah, yeah. Like, cause fourteen, it's so much going on, right? It's like, oh, oh yeah, so and also a special guest appearance. Yes, exactly. It's like we, we don't have time for this. I think I think yeah yeah that guest appearance in fourteen. They're like oh hey someone else has a book. Go check out his book. <laughs> yeah, but I mean I'll give it to the the imagery of it. Mm-hmm. Mwah, chef's kiss. I think that's really the enduring legacy of Green Goblin is the the aesthetic. I think that's the whole appeal of the villain. Like it's like Joker on steroids. You know what I mean? Like. Oh yeah, it's that... the green, it's the purple. He's got all the cool shit for toys. He's got the glider, the pumpkin bombs, the mask. You know, I don't really like the armored look <laughs> too much, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, and it, it's based on a serum too. Like it's it's just so much when you get into the right kind of it. You just, you have to go with it when it comes to the Green Goblin, which is why like they kept trying to make other goblins so it can make more sense but the more they tried to make it make sense the less it made sense <laughs> i mean it's the 60s too so yes every, every- Back in Dale, stay tuned for november uh, Cabo, <laughs> but like it just it just like gets to a point where you're just like what is even going on well again i mean norman was norman was like the kind of like the first franchise villain wasn't he you know just oh they, yeah everyone just starts stealing well he stuff. kept leaving uh vacant buildings around with all this shit of course somebody was gonna stumble across it it is just a matter of time. Oh my god! Oh my lord! Can you? Uh, yes, again, our, our theory. I mean, can we just come out Marvel and say Betty Brant was behind every single Hobgoblin and stuff, and just 
you know, be like, uh, you know, Norman was messing with her man early on. So she was just like, you know what? I thought you were dead. I took your, I, I was going to steal all your stuff and build an army with these hobgoblins. And you came back and I just wanted to crush you. I'm saying, like, all you have to do is give us credit. Just take it and run with it. Mm -hmm. Just take it and run with it. Oh, did you did you read the latest Amazing Spider-Man? Of course. So, yes, we've... I have to keep up with my, my monthly disappointment, of course. Oh, my. So, so yes, we've we've cleansed Peter of uh, Norman's sins, but then at the end, he just starts giggling a little bit. He's like, Ooh. So oh, wait, if you if, if somebody wanted to be the laughing joke, but just couldn't be an edge lord enough to do it, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> like it's just it's not the vibes right now, man. Zeb, I'm, I'm so like, if we if we get a, a, a inferior Spider Man, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> I mean, I mean, oh, <laughs> I get it. Uh, <laughs> yes, I get it. I mean, I like that Zeb. I, I'm such an edge lord, Wells. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was part of Brand New Day, and he doesn't kowtow away from it. Like, most people that were involved in that and the Clone Saga, they kind of downplay that. Not Zeb, though. He's like, I'm going to bring back something from Brand New Day. Like, I'm just going to rub it the salt in the wound. Yeah, it sucks, but give me and my- it ain't the fucking marriage, by the oh! way. <laughs> yeah, it sucks, though. Give me my shekel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Right. I just, I, I, I hate the gold, oh, golden goblin, by the way. Like, I hate that. Oh, I hate the yeah. goblin, too. So. Yeah, like, I, just the goblin aesthetic. Like, it, what, what it's, is it? It's I don't understand. It's becoming symbiotes, you know? Everyone's <gasps> now it's one. It's the original symbiote, even. Yeah. It, it, now everyone's a goblin. Yeah. Everybody gets a goblin. I mean, you know. That's, uh, that's true, kids. Everyone gets a goblin. Gobble, gobble. But like, why is the goblin guy bat shaped? And why? I mean, like, it's it's like Halloween themed, but like in the worst way. It's giving um Halloween three season of the witch. Like, why is this in the franchise? <laughs> well, again, it's so weird. Again, we'll get into this. The first couple uh, appearances here, it's almost like Stan was like, was the Green Goblin supposed to be like a witch or something? Because like, it's not even yeah. The, the, the Wait, what was that? Isn't like an alternate universe where he is or something like it's Maybe. like magic i'm not sure but it's like you like i mean look at these first appearances that it's that glider is he literally calls it a broomstick yes i mean was he supposed to be a warlock and not a <gasps> did, did stanley not know the difference between a goblin and a warlock maybe <laughs> but i'm like what was norman uh compens well you know what he was compensating well for. yeah come on his flying. And he's just he's he's and he's certifiably insane as all real billionaires are. Once you have a certain level of money, it just infects you, right? <laughs> so. I mean, I mean he, I mean he's he was Elon Musk of the sixties. You know, he had all this money, he didn't know what to do with it, so he's like, I'll become a villain. No, he's that one billionaire that like is trying to reverse it, uh, like age in reverse, and he's like taking his son's blood, and you know the guy I'm talking about. No, but it sounds like just, yeah. I, I forget his name, but like yeah, he actually looks worse than what he like looks older than when he started doing it. So it's really bad. Oh my god, it sounds like Professor Power who put his mind in his son's body. <laughs> yes, I feel like he read a comic and was like, you know what? I have enough money. Let me try. Yeah, that's I'm trying it. not to. His whole point is he doesn't. He want to be. He wants to be the first person that doesn't die. Um, it's Brian Johnson. Oh jeez. Yeah. Yeah, that he yes he read he read too many Spider Man books. I like if he doesn't have an altar of Norman Osborn somewhere in there in his house, I would not be surprised. I mean, yeah, these guys are trying to digitize their. I you know someone's they're all that's it's what not even that he wants his body to live forever, and that's literally not ever going to happen. That is just not possible. People well, are delusional. People, this is what I mean. When you have so much money, it just does something to your brain, and you just become. Un untethered from reality and well, Stanley knew it Stanley knew it that is that is who Norman Osborn is why did they th why do you think they created AI I heard somewhere they're like oh it's someone oh, who was I listening to so someone was saying yeah they're like yeah AI is going to help cure cancer but then you know the machines are going to eat us I mean we deserve it oh yeah that's why they created it. Listen, AI I, I honestly believe if the robots take over they're going to take better care of the earth than we ever could and oh yeah I'm just saying like you know we, we had a good run not really. We're, we're terrible. We're terrible species, right? Well, they said. But we had a good run. We did what we could. Just, just let the AI robots roam the earth, and when the aliens come, they're like, "Oh, we got here a little too late." Well, that's what they said. You know, we, you know, hu humanity used to be the smartest thing on the planet. Not no more. <laughs> yeah. AI's I mean, taking over. Eh, I mean, to be 
honest, are we really smart? I mean, we're the only animals on the planet that pay rent. Oh, and destroy like the everybody else lives in harmony and like you know we're on a spinning rock and we're paying fucking rent. Like, ugh, don't even get me started. <laughs> All right, should we get to these issues? <laughs> let's get to these issues, because we, 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 we can't be late for DG. That's right. All right. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> All right, kids. So the first one, the Goblin's first appearance, Amazing Spider-Man number 14 from April 1960, uh, no, July 1964. So, of course, who's, you know who your writer's going to be, kids. Uh, <laughs> Stan, well, your writer and editor. Excelsior. Stan Lee. <laughs> Penciler. Yeah. Penciler and inker Steve Ditko, uh, the colorist is uncredited, and letterer Artie Sim- Simek. All right, and in the grotesque adventure of the Green Goblin. <laughs> well, okay, I take it back. Like, so you you know how Marvel like is like House of Mystery. Maybe this is where Stan's mind was at the time. Oh yeah, yeah. More on that, but like he's trying to make it family friendly or something. Maybe the more that I think about it. Yeah, is it? It's kind of it's kind of a cross between a yeah a goblin or a witch or something and like a gangster. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I mean, if unless you're like a straight up super villain, yeah. He he. At this point, Stan has Spider Man fighting gangsters. So. Yeah. There's a new costume villain in town, the Green Goblin. After he's perfected his flying broomstick, uh, that's <laughs> that sounds uh, <laughs> so hickory dickory <laughs> dock, you know. Uh, <laughs> He visits the recently released Enforcers and offers them the opportunity Yikes. to get revenge against Spider- Oh, yeah. That's, that's where we're at, kids. We're only 14 issues in. The Enforcers are, you know, considered a big part of the Rogues Gallery. We've come so far, but not really. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, offers them the opportunity to get revenge against Spider-Man. He travel. Oh, God. Here we go. He travels to California to visit BJ Cosmos, <laughs> a film director who made it big with his last film, The Nameless Thing from the Black Lagoon in the Murky Swamp. The Goblin offers him his next cinematic. Does he only have beef with people in Hollywood? Like, what? What, what is even that reference? He'll never make a Spider Man movie. <laughs> you, know that, you know he wanted a Spider Man movie already at issue 14. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not too long after this that he goes to Japan and does the whole Spider-Man anime thing. So, oh I mean, yeah, not anime, but like basically Super Sentai. Oh <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, Laurel started doing like animated series by, uh, by like '67. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, you know it's on his mind. So yeah, I think he had beef with Hollywood. <laughs> oh yeah, the Goblin offers him his next cinematic spectacular, a movie about Spider-Man. <laughs> a returning to New York City, the Green Goblin circles around the city until he draws Spider-Man's attention, who is coming out of high school. He makes a film offer to Spider-Man, who agrees to participate. With the announcement that Spider-Man is going to be in a film, J. Jonah Jameson sends Peter to Hollywood to cover the story. This worries Betty Brandt, because he won't be around for her to manipulate, because she believes that Peter might fall for some silver-screen starlet while he's in California. Petty Betty Brandt! This is what I'm saying! Petty this Betty. This is what I'm saying! Petty Betty. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Don't you dare look at another girl in California. <laughs> and then he comes back with bruises and she thinks, what the hell is going on in California? <laughs> Did you visit one of those sex dungeons? <laughs> uh, mm. Arriving in California, Peter reports that BJ Cosmos' is studio. <laughs> you know Talk about reporting for duty. Hey, <laughs> BJ Cosmos. As Spider-Man and he, the Green Goblin, and what he believes to be actors resembling the Enforcers are taken to New Mexico for a desert fight sequence. Okay, kids, New Mexico desert. Oh, boy, I wonder who this guest star is going to be. Uh... Brian Cranston! <laughs> I am the danger. <laughs> I am the one who knocks. <laughs> Someone's about to knock. Uh... The Green Goblin reveals his true motives and Spider-Man battles him and the Enforcers across the desert. Their fight takes them into a cave where Spider-Man easily defeats the Enforcers. Again, this is 60, what, 64. Like, how clumsy is this crossover, you know, bro? You know what? I, oh, I know. He literally... They're like, oh, we're going to give you some extra green. Hey, how hey, about that? Hey, he literally trips over it, you know? <laughs> yeah, much. like, wow. Their fight takes them in... Uh, however, they stumble upon the Hulk's hiding place. That's no 
Jolly Green Giant, sir. No, hell. Spider-Man is forced to defend himself from the Jade Giant. He uses the Hulk's strength to his advantage, tricking the Hulk into smashing a border, blocking the cave exit. Hulk dumb! Hulk smash his only escape route! Ah, Spider-Man fails to... <laughs> Spider-Man fails to prevent the Green Goblin's escape and hides until the Hulk leaves the area. He leaves the Enforcers to be collected by the police. Returning to Hollywood, Spider-Man finds that BJ Cosmos has canned the Spider-Man movie idea in favor of a Hulk movie. That's too real, bro! That's too real! And there's your origin of the MCU. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about like, uh, art imitating life, bro. Or life know. imitating art. Like, wow. BJ decides to go with a Hulk movie. Where's my real name, Orville? <laughs> Imperious Rex the Man. <laughs> Uh, when Spider-Man demands payment, I need my money. Gimme, gimme. <laughs> oh yeah, this is this is this is Petey, uh, Petty Peter Parker right now. Oh, yeah. Don't want to mess with him. He's got anger issues. He hasn't figured it out yet. You need the money. Gimme, gimme. You want to know what happens to that promoter who didn't pay me? Oh, <laughs> well, he left. He just got ripped off. Yeah. Uh, Cosmos refuses, citing the contract. Spider-Man would only get paid if the movie was completed. Yeah, you rube. <laughs> Peter is forced to use the rest of his money to bust back to New York. He should have just flipped home. What are you talking about? It's a desert. What's he going to swing? He's, he's going to swing three. Cacti, baby. Cacti. He's going to swing 3,000 miles. <laughs> Meanwhile, somewhere in the city, the Green Goblin resumes his mysterious his mysterious civilian guise and begins plotting his next scheme against Spider-Man. A man in a trench coat and a head in the shadows. Oh, no. It was even worse. It was a man in the shadows with his head obscured, <laughs> tying his tie. Yeah, exactly. Because again, it's sixty-four. All men wear tie, you know, of a certain I, age. I'm ties. saying one of the worst things: men stop wearing suits every day. Actually, no. When people stop wearing suits on planes, that's when society collapsed. There, I said it. Mm-hmm. Wait. Well, you also could smoke on planes back then, so maybe not. Maybe not. When when, <laughs> when airplanes became WalMarts, yes, yeah, see, you know, yeah. yes, that was the downfall of society. Uh, oh yes, and uh, yes, the Enforcers were recently defeated in, by Spider-Man in Amazing Spider-Man number ten. Mm. Oh my, uh, Stan Lee smoking a doobie. This issue contains an error on page two, where Green Goblin addresses the Enforcers as the four of you. There are only three people in that room: Fancy Dan, Montana, and Ox. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> Norman was so high. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah, why should you lead us, Green Goblin? He's all high. I gotta fly. I gotta fly and broomstick you. <laughs> exactly. Mormon smoking Doobie Osborne. Yeah. Uh, Smoke the Doobie. <laughs> all right. So, thoughts on. Hop over to 39 or. Oh, no, no, no. You know what comes first? Untold Tales of Spider-Man 25, because... Oh, I was hoping you'd forget that one. That Why? It's pretty bad. Do, do you want to drop Do you want to drop that one? We can't. No, I'm just kidding. It's, no, we... it's bad, though. <laughs> well, again, it's it's kind of retconning stuff, because, again, this was... Already, the... bro! I know, in the 90s. All right, Untold Tales of Spider-Man 25, uh, October 1997. Uh, oh, writers, Kurt Busiek and Roger Stern... Penciler, friend of the show, Mr. Ron Friends. This is Ron Mars. Then that's the Ron Mar- wrong Ron. Yeah, I was this like, is wait a minute, that's Ron, Ron Friends, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. It was the wrong Ron. We, have, we so- have so many drops and so many friends of the show. You know, it's hard to keep track like that. That's right. We have so many friends like Jeff Johnson. Check out Capes and Lunatics episode 310. All right. Uh, Anchor Bob McCloud, a colorist Steve Matson, letterer Richard Starkings, and Emerson Miranda, and editor Tom Brevoort. Sure, sure. <laughs> and again, we're going to try to crowbar as many uh, references to 60s Spider Man in here, including like supporting cast. Bad, bad men on campus. <laughs> hey, I have something like that on my hard drive. Hey, oh, yeah, you and Justin. <laughs> I think the word starts with twink, though. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, yeah, you and Justin definitely have this. At an abandoned warehouse along the Manhattan waterfront, Crime Master. <laughs> <laughs> Crime Master. Check one- somewhere going, well, at least my name's not Crime Master. <laughs> hey, man, that was another Stanley original, Crime Master. 
Uh. Meets with the Green Goblin. Okay, get ready for this one. With the fall of Lucky Lobo. <laughs> I'm surprised someone hasn't tried the retcon that work. He's the Lobo brother's dad. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> Put that out there. With the fall of Lucky Lobo, there is a power vacuum in the criminal org underworld, and the pair have met to discuss a truce. Yeah, power vacuum, you know why? Because it sucks! <laughs> Man! Crime Master only agrees to align himself with the Green Goblin if the villain will reveal his true identity. I thought this was actually kind of clever, and I wonder yeah. I, I wonder if this was like a callback. I wonder if like this was like one of the names that came up, you know, when they're when Stan was like, hmm, I want him to have a link to Peter It would Parker. be awesome if it was Jane. That would made more sense than Norman Osborn. I'm just saying. Yeah. The Green Goblin. He's got that he's got that beef and vendetta for Spider-Man like. I wonder if it was just was Stan just like, you know what? I want to keep Jameson. I want him to have this constant foil so, you know, but if I make it Jameson, he's eventually going to go to jail. I mean, maybe maybe not. Well, 6 uh, 6 60, you know, in the back in the 60s, I think they were like, "Oh yeah, eventually these guys have to be brought to justice," you know. Yeah. Uh, again, comic code. I think it was like you had to show like crime doesn't pay and stuff, you know. Ugh, stupid ass comic code. Mm -hmm. So glad when they, everybody was brave enough to ditch it, bro. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, the Green Goblin reveals himself to be none other than Daily Bugle publisher Jake Jonah Jameson. This makes sense, the crime master. <laughs> He's since, like, yeah, that tracks. Since Jameson always publishes anti Spider Man editorials. This is all a ruse as once crime master is left, the Goblin removes his, uh, his other it mask. Was a He was wearing two masks. Yes, he were, as he uh, removes his phony Jameson disguise, as he is really Norman Osborn. So yes, kids, he was wearing two masks. But it's like he gets shot down at the Daily Bugle. <laughs> Crime master. Oh my god. The next day, Peter Parker is on campus at Empire State University as part of Midtown High's week long visit to the colleges around the city. He is there with it with his teacher Raymond Warren. His aunt, Yikes. his aunt, brother of someone we'll about to meet, his Aunt May and her friend, Anna, Wa Anna Watson. Ah, y'all know how I feel about aunt, aunt Anna. Yeah. Raymond is offered to show Peter around, leaving Anna and May to look around on their own. Ah, oh, Aunt May's looking to get some strange uh, college. Uh, yeah. Relatable content for me, Philip. Hey, <laughs> oh, that Oh, that's the heart medicine she was looking for. I see. <laughs> Heart medicine, heart on medicine. Okay. Uh, Sometimes baloney is the cure, you know? <laughs> what, that the Falco baloney? <laughs> I didn't say phony baloney factory. <laughs> uh, Anna has come to look into Empire State University's theater program, something that Mary Jane could not attend because she has a modeling audition. Yep, there's a check mark, Mary Jane. Uh, meanwhile, both Peter and May share equal concerns about attending a school close to home and how much for how much further education is going to cost. Uh, Even though Uncle's been pensioned, I mean, at this time and day, like uh, totally could have paid for it. I'm I'm just saying. And once again, what? Amazing Spider-Man Four, yeah, third. It just, was like two hundred dollars huh. to go to college back then. Like, give me a break. And and, and fit. And, and, if you need money, just fake some more pictures. You know, like throwing some sand in the air and saying, "Ah, oh, hey, I fought Sandman." <laughs> in a puddle i fought hydro man <laughs> no hydro man yeah but oh yeah <laughs> throw through a hat through a, a cowboy hat on the uh, ground yeah it's fancy dance <laughs> what was that Montana? a mannequin shattered to pieces uh turn of the century was he <laughs> oh <laughs> professor warner sure assures peter that esu is just as good as state university and you'll be here for a long time kid and escorts him into the <laughs> so long dan wilder Escorts him into the science building. As they enter, they are spotted by Flash Thompson, ding, who's looking around campus with Liz Allen, ding. Ding. Yeah, she's a ding. Flash is disappointed. <laughs> ding back. Oh, <laughs> yeah, ding back. Flash is disappointed because he figured that he would be rid of Peter Parker once they all graduated from high school. I th well, I think it's the other way around. I think he figured you weren't coming to college, Flash. Uh... Still, Flash figures he's going to go to school with Liz, but Liz tells him that she doesn't know where she is going to go since her grades haven't been that great. <laughs> and she comes for money. Uh, inside the science building, Raymond introduces Peter to his brother, Miles Warren. Ding, ding, ding. Yikes. Who is a professor at Empire State University. 
Mal is looking forward to teaching Peter after how adept Peter is, Parker is, with science. <laughs> Just with science? Uh-huh. However, No when... specificity, it's fine. Well, Just, he... you know, science! Yeah, bitch! I'm like, what? who are you, Jesse? <laughs> <laughs> Maz is looking forward to teaching Peter. Uh, uh, however, when Peter expresses his concerns about being able to afford going to college, Maz tells Peter not to worry as that scholarships exist for that very purpose. Okay, no, no. Uh, no. College was so cheap back then. There's just no fucking way, man. <laughs> well, again, with sliding time, is it, you know, is the price still, going still, up? Still, I'm yeah. just saying. I know. Uh, it's then that Maz is briefly distracted. When he catches a glimpse of a young woman walking past the window, this young woman is Gwen Stacy. Bing, bing. Uh, uh. Yeah, come on. Like in the in the sixties, it was like four years cost like maybe eleven thousand dollars. I guess the sixties. Yeah, look at those thigh high boots. Look at those go go boots. Uh, who bumps into her classmate Harry Osborne? Ding. 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 <laughs> Who is, who is glad to see that Gwen is considering going to Empire State University. Harry tells her that his father, Norman Osborne, who we've already dinged, is an ESU alumnus and is dedicating a new test chamber to the science department and offers... That's the only way Harry got in. hey And offers to take her to the unveiling. <laughs> yeah, uh, you ask, ask some of those uh, women in Manhattan. That's the only way he got in. <laughs> oh, how is Danielle holding up with that Britney memoir coming out? Oh, she don't care. Says, did you did you did you hear the the quote from Britney Spears? Which one? She's she's like um, when they were she was losing her virginity to him. She's like, okay, put it in. And he said, I already did. And she said, a world collapse. <laughs> I did not fucking wait till October twenty fourth. <laughs> I knew that quote. I mean, <laughs> bye oh, bye. <laughs> We have to, oh, bro, we have to cover that on um, Salty and Petty. What, the Britney thing? Yeah, yeah. You're going to have to get the book, Rips. I'll send you an Amazon gift card, but you have to get the book. Okay, okay. We have to talk about okay. it. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> that's okay. Oh, yeah, we'll cover that. Oh, uh, 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 bu- bu- oh yeah. Uh, Warren getting hard for Gwen. Uh <laughs> Her- be the first time, when going to be the last time. Oh, no, that obsession is just going to build, kids. While at the engineering center, Raymond Warren is showing Peter a new experimental seismic ray that ESU has been developing with Atwell Petroleum and the Brand Corporation. Better than Roxxon, am I right, kids? Well, Brand, <laughs> Brand's evil, evil, court, evil central, too, so. Yeah. He takes Peter down to the ex- exhibition hall where the device is going to be demonstrated in the new testing you chamber. Know, you think he learned his lesson from going to science experiment? <laughs> exactly. I know. Aren't you worried you're going to grow a second head now or something? Jeez. I, or find that webbing's finally going to come out of your ass? Something. As they approach the opening ceremony, Peter recognizes the familiar voice of his employer, J. Jonah Jameson. Jameson has been invited to open the dedication and is in another one of his long-winded speeches. Standing behind him is Norman Osborne, who is glad that everyone is distracted by Jonah's speech, allowing his partner, the crime master, to carry out the next phase of their current plan. From the back of the room, Peter notices a number of men passing by in overalls and recognizes some of them as criminals he has captured as Spider-Man. He's finally listening to that spy- <laughs> God job after getting out of prison that you put them in, bro. Like, yeah, but I mean, he, they're not, but they could be. Yeah, but he's still young, so that spider sense is working. It's actually uh, working, no psychosomatic ting, ting, situation ting, 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 ting. here. Exactly. Uh, Spider Man, uh, sp- <laughs> suspecting something is going down, hail. So Peter slips into a nearby. It's not w- Betty, so no. <laughs> Peter slips into a near. Uh, <laughs> oh, maybe that's why he fell in love with Gwen. He, he heard the rumors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Peter slips into a nearby washroom to change into Spider-Man. In the nearby lab, the men in overalls are attempting to steal the seismic ray, an operation that is overseen by the crime master from a mobile van. Unfor- you mean a battle van? Oh, there you go. Aren't all vans mobile? Unfortunately, I would hope so. Uh, well, there's some people who live in a van down by the river. They probably. Don't I was going to say, food. unless it's up on blocks, yeah. Unfortunately for them, the theft is interrupted by the arrival of Spider-Man. When one of the crooks tries to blast Spider-Man with the device, the wall crawler dodges out of the way. 
The blast ends up blasting open the wall, revealing them to all the people in the auditorium on the other side. You know what? As a matter of fact, if I was a if, if I was a citizen of Marvel's New York and I heard that there was going to be a, a a big scientific thing available, I'd get the fuck out of the city, man. Unless you're looking for a payout or something. <laughs> Nah, they, the insurance rates are, they, they don't pay out oh, in yeah. Marvelous New York. They can't. This is probably like Florida. Everybody's like, you know what? We're not going to offer insurance here. It is too dangerous. Exactly. <laughs> we will lose so much money. I'm just saying, like, at this point. <laughs> While everyone is distracted by Spider-Man's battle, Norman takes the opportunity to incapacitate Jonah so he can maintain his deception to the crime master. Dragging, yeah, he shocks him with one of those goblin uh, gloves. Dragging, dra- dragging Jonah into a storage room, Norman then summons his goblin glider and changes it into the Green Goblin. By this point, the web slinger has finished wrapping up the crooks when the Green Goblin snatches the seismic weapon. Using the weapon to cave in parts of the ceiling, the goblin forces Spider-Man to protect the panicked people as they flee the scene. While outside, Flash hears that Spider-Man is battling the Green Goblin and rushes into the building to watch the battle. Meanwhile, Spider-Man has lured the Green Goblin into the test chamber, which begins to ramp up its test sequence, trapping them inside. As the two combatants spar, the technicians scramble to shut down the test chamber before the devices inside kill them both. At that moment, Jonah wakes up and tries to leave the storage closet. Unfortunately, Flash Thompson rushes past and slams the door back in his face, knocking the publisher out once more. In the control room, the technicians are stopped from shutting things down by the crime master who forces them to activate all the devices in the hopes of eliminating both Spider-Man and his uneasy partner. While Jonah is getting knocked out by Flash again, crime master has the technicians crank up the test chamber to full power and shoots out the control panel before making his escape. With the chamber overloading, the technicians the technician orders everyone out of the building before it explodes. Hearing this, Spider-Man manages to get a hold of the seismic device and uses it to destroy the chamber before it can explode. Although this allows the Green Goblin to escape, as Spider-Man pulls himself out of the rubble, J. Jonah Jameson finally arrives and blames Spider-Man for destroying everything. Not surprised that Jonah would blame him for this, Spider-Man decides to leave. Still monitoring the situation, the Crime Master hears Jonah ranting and raving, still thinking that Jameson is the Green Goblin, thinks that his new partner is more unstable than he originally thought and decides he should terminate their partnership quickly. Meanwhile, the Green Goblin returns to his hideout and decides that convincing the crime master that he was really J. Jonah Jameson was a mistake as an investigation might still lead to the exposure of his true identity and decides to proceed very carefully in the future. Back at Empire State University, Flash Thompson is excited to go to Empire State University after the day's events. Overhearing this from the rooftop, Spider-Man hopes that his Aunt May wasn't go- wasn't around to see what happened. Otherwise, she wouldn't allow him to attend this college, scholarship or not. Still, he figures that this is a problem for another day and swings off, sa- satisfied that whatever happens this day proves that no matter what his future has in store for him, it will be far from dull. Thoughts? <laughs> I mean, they modern comics could never get this much in, it, so, in an issue. They just couldn't. I know, I know. They don't want to. And again, this was the final issue of Untold Tales. So, yeah, I think they were trying to cram everything in there. Mm. I mean, Untold Tales was definitely a cash grab. I mean, mean, it wasn't bad because most, uh, was it all of them? I know most of the issues were only 90. It was that thing where they, you know, they had that 99. They were 99 cents, kids. So, still a cash grab. Like, it's like where how we know every single second of Wolverine's life now. Yeah. Just saying. Well, this is what happened between page 19 and page 20 i'm trying to remember there's one issue where they give you a graph because yeah these they they plotted this out like kurt busek so it's like where each issue of untold tales takes place between two issues of amazing spider-man yeah yeah mm. oh don't worry about the crime master kids he gets gunned down uh in amazing spider-man 27 yeah uh, uh, Peter uh, mentions a recent visit to state university that was in fantastic 435 <laughs> Uh, mm. oh yes and all this is alluding to the fact that Peter and his classmates will be graduating from high school in Amazing Spider-Man 23 cue that vitamin C song oh my (laughs) although both Peter and Flash will attend ESU yes Liz will depart from their lives for a time yeah she comes back with a vengeance until she comes back to do to do Harry as or as Lilith calls it a fate worse than death (laughs) You could be a gold digger, but god damn, Harry Osborn? Well, again, I mean, maybe it's... Like... And you gave birth to the demon spawn, Normie? Like, ugh. 
I that mean, is a work. That is a fate worse than Gwen Stacy. I'm I mean, it, I mean, it can't be that much work. I mean, uh, again, I mean, speaking of, well, I mean, he's got a sad whistle, you know. Well, yeah, he's a, he's a sad boy. You don't want to deal with that. Well, again, uh, you know, uh, and he's unstable. Let, let's call back to it. You know, Harry's probably the whole. Oh, we're gonna get him. Are you, are you gonna put it in? It is in. <laughs> Well, he a he's unstable. B he's abusive. Now this is all canon. I'm just saying, like he's got the small broomstick. Oh yeah, he he he's definitely uh yeah, um, he's a, he's a sad whistle kind of guy. Oh yeah. All right. So should we get to thirty nine and forty? Let's do it. We're just chugging along, bud. As we uh yes. Oh god. Amazing Spider Man thirty nine. Look at this damn cover, bro. Well, it's iconic. Everyone everyone <laughs> knows it. Yeah. Uh, from August 1966, again, writer and editor Stan Lee. How green was my goblin? How about you go to the doctor? Hey, well, I, <laughs> That's what that sounds to me. Like. I, I know. I'll, I do. I do. What am I going to say? How green was my goblin? This time, penciler John Ramita Sr. Uh, Sr. Well, at the point at the time, yeah. it was just John Ramita. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, mm, <laughs> retcon, retcon. <laughs> Inker Mike Esposito and letterer Artie Simic. Uh, oh, poor Artie Simic. Mm-hmm. The Green Goblin <clears throat> is plotting his revenge against Spider-Man and plans to reveal his secret identity to the world. Meanwhile, Pete feels he's coming down with something and visits Dr. Bromwell. During the visit, the doctor tells Pete that Aunt May well, here we go, has, has, has a plot device. No, uh... Must plot not- armor? No, no, no! It must not have any sudden shock or excitement to her, or it could be fatal. Ugh. Oh. Just give her a surprise party already. The vapors. <laughs> as he goes to school, we see Harry Osborne being dropped off by his dad. I'm something as a, I'm something of a lunatic myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. When Harry asks if anything is wrong, his dad snaps angrily at him, and Harry begins to worry. <laughs> Peter sees what's wrong with uh, sees what's wrong with Harry and starts the uh, starts can to confide in him his concerns much to the to the delight of Gwen Stacy. <laughs> As Spider Man web slings to clear his head cold, he finds a robbery in progress and starts to fight the gang of crooks. The longer he fights, the more suspicious he gets, and finally is proven what right when they hit him with a gas. <laughs> This gas that Green Goblin has concocted prevents his spider sense from working. As he, what the hell? As he exits the scene, he goes to change back to Peter Parker, and the Goblin watches without being noticed. Ah, Nor- Norman's a voyeur, eh? Well, we already kind of knew that. Stroking that broomstick. <laughs> <laughs> He's charging those pumpkin bombs, huh? Whoa! <laughs> you, know what he, you know what he wants to do with them pumpkin bombs, right? couple of bulls oh, yeah. down the gold and uh, how hey as the goblin follows him home he picks up his name on a microphone and learns his true identity the goblin confronts him outside and begins his attack on peter parker uh, mm. pete fights to prevent aunt may from knowing the true I- the, knowing the truth about uh but the goblin soon knocks pete unconscious and wraps him in a steel alloy clay i love how they're fighting on the front yard and nobody notices I mean, it, they do live in Queens, to be fair. Right? Yeah. So, listen. What? Listen. One thing about New Yorkers, they're gonna mind their business. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you should see like that. Uh, that meme. It's like some guy, like literally, is like passed out from like a seizure or something on the but on like uh, on the subway. And everybody's in their phone. Like, they ain't my problem. Jeez. <laughs> it's, New Yorkers are gonna mind their business. Okay? And, and it's sixty six too. They're just drawing the curtains and saying, "Ah, it must be those perverts and hippies." Yeah. <laughs> Oh, plus domestic violence. Yeah, you. Oh, have to your own yeah. Business. You hear somebody screaming, "Yo, we closing the curtains." Oh, we. Oh, there's fighting. Oh, maybe. Oh, maybe Peter. We're, we're putting on some um, Perry Como. <laughs> <laughs> either Perry's be- or either either Peter's beating that elderly in, or she's beating him. Yeah. Okay. yeah either way, you don't want to get involved. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, as he is taken to the Goblin's lair, Hale Peter struggles against his bonds. Since he's confident in destroying Spider-Man, the go- so overconfidence, <laughs> the Goblin reveals himself to be none other than Norman Osborn himself. You know what could be worse? Hmm. It could be revealed that Norman Osborn is Peter Parker's real dad. And oh. then him and Harry are like half-brothers. Like, don't give the movie... I don't want to put that into the air, but like, I always think it could always be worse. They could always have that in their back pocket. 
They could always have that in their back pocket. Mm, I don't know. Peter's hair is not that superior, no. My fight is just to get touched by a white man with cornrows. <laughs> like when he learns the truth and activates the cornrows, he's like, son of a bitch! There's some cultural... I am an Osborne! There's some cultural appropriation. <laughs> I mean, it works. I mean, there was a point, yeah, after Harry, or yeah, Harry dies, and Norman tries to make Peter his heir. Yeah, to play, I'm oh. just saying, like, that's what really, like, back in the day, I'm like, are they going to pull the trigger on this? Because. Oh, God. Like, so... It just seems so random. It's like, yeah, it, the, the villain is my best friend's dad. Oh, my God. No, I didn't sleep with your ex-girlfriend. I slept with your mother. <laughs> oh, my God. It, it's giving, it's giving Malcolm, Malcolm and Peter from Green Arrow. Because, like, they want it. They wanted Malcolm to be uh the dad. But then they're like, no, nah, let's just make, him, make her Thea's dad. And I'm just like. Okay. It's, a, it's a freaking Darth Vader situation all over. <laughs> I mean, that's classic. That's I am your father. <laughs> I mean, they keep bringing up Norman and trying to like redeem him, so I'm just like, what's the point? To uh, what end? I mean, especially this current stuff where, where he's acting all good. I'm surprised Zeb hasn't pulled yeah, that. It's creepy, uh, bro. I'm surprised Zeb hasn't pulled that out. Oh my god, if I if I called it and that's what Zeb has planned for the end of his run, I'm gonna be pissed. I'm going to make sure Zeb, if he does that, listen, if any writer does that, I'll make sure they never work in this industry again. That is a bridge too far. Hell. Oh, my God. And I, I don't think you have to worry about that, Lilith. You know why? They're not going to let Zeb Wells run in. <laughs> uh, weren't they planning the next two years or something with the end of this uh, last arc? Ugh. Yeah. We'll see about that. Uh, sales are down <laughs> sales are down on amazing yes listen when the cash cow stops uh producing milk you know what they do i thought it would have ended already but it seems like they're still there so i don't know i don't think anybody wants to touch it with the 10 foot pole at this point hey uh, i wouldn't i know i know i, I thought they would have pulled the plug already <sighs> All right, but after the abrupt resignation of Steve Ditko, this is the first artwork on the title by John Romita. Stan Lee decided on John Romita Sr. as the new artist after viewing his work on a Spider-Man Daredevil crossover in Daredevil 16 and 17. Romita will pen, pen or ink over 100 issues and covers of Spider-Man and become Marvel's art director in the 1970s. The man, the myth, the legend. Uh-huh. Uh, it's so unfortunate that, you know, it comes under that cloud of, you know, the resignation of Ditko, but it is what it is. Sometimes you just got to make room. Uh, but again, it's... And, and that's the problem with the comic book industry right now. Like, none of the old people, like, really want to give it up, and that's why w wages are stagnant and things like that, so... Well, again, even, like, the old school, I don't think they're getting paid that much, because, I mean, everyone's doing Kickstarters and stuff. Yeah, it's... it's I mean, and that's fine. It's I mean, I mean, have something of your own, but like at the same time, are outside of like Spawn and Archie Comics, like, <laughs> you know, like really, like who's like who's really checking for like those those independent? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you got your occasional Red Sonias and stuff like that. But, like, well, I was gonna say if there's a big name attached, people, you know, so, like Image might take a look and be like, let's well, okay, let's see what they're doing. Yeah. So you know, it's like. You're never going to see, like, like for the most part, when they do the Kickstarter, you're never going to see that book in a comic book store. You know what I mean? And, but they're yeah. making more money uh, per issue that way. But at the same time, like, is it, do you, what, what do you want? Do you, like, the money and, you, you know what I mean? Like, or the prestige or, like, do you just, like, a writer just wants somebody to read it, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> like, that that's the end goal, right? So it's just kind of like one of those things. It's like, yeah, it's a small and loyal market, but at the same time, You'll never see it on the shelf, more than likely. You know, and I, I think that's just like one of those things about being a comic book writer. You, you kind of want to see it on that on the local comic book shelf. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, I I need some readers. Gimme, give gimme. Give you need the money. Gimme, give gimme. Give but yeah, it, it's it's kind of it's so Spider Man's history so weird. <laughs> I know, Remember, especially again with all big properties when people start ch trying to retcon the past stuff. It's just like okay, yeah. uh, <coughs> since past. Uh, Anything really, Spider Man. Anything post two thousand and five, really, Spider Man. Like they just every way, which way, but loose with like the retcons. Like I'm just surprised Uncle Ben just isn't alive at this point. Like they've done everything else, but <laughs> I know. I mean, we have a version of Gwen back. Bucky's back. Yeah, I'm surprised Uncle Ben's like the last holdout. And like I get that. Like it's like just let him and Aunt May be together, so we can do something. They could go live in Florida. With Aunt, Aunt, Aunt Anna, that's where she is, right? Oh, oh yeah, at Del Boca Vista, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
Oh my god. Is this the Green Goblin's uh, closet or Will's Hellfire sex dungeon? Bat missiles, asphyxiation grenade. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I say, like, whoever gets me a bazooka for my birthday, that's who I'm going to marry. That, that's going to put it out there. She is that is my true soulmate. Whoever can grab a bazooka and give it to me for my birthday. I know some of you losers are listening, so I heard she has a full, <laughs> I heard she has a full gun cabinet of those bat missiles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're not missiles. <laughs> they're nukes. They're nukes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now pick yourself off the floor, Justin. Thank you. Uh Oh, this cover. It looks like um Spider Man's been uh shoving missiles up the green goblet. <laughs> what, number forty? Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. So, oh, oh my. Oh, we're gonna have to cover. Oh, one day we're gonna have to get to that one issue where uh, it all it, it, it floats around so uh the internet every so often now where Spider Man's down and Sandman's punching him and it looks like he's like punching him in the ass or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know the one. I believe my profile pic was that for a while. Oh my. Oh. Back when I, I used to change my profile pics all the time. Oh, oh my God! I need, I need to put that up next. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's like a national, or there's like a, probably a prostate health month or something. I, or day, <laughs> I, know, I gotta put that up. <sighs> All right, so Amazing Spider-Man number forty from September 1966. Same team. Uh, uh, Sp- oh, it's in June. It's the third Saturday of June, National uh, oh. Medical Exam Day. Just so you know. Okay. Spidey Saves the Day, featuring the end of the Green Goblin. <laughs> yeah, right. If only! Am I right, kids? Exactly. Pete is trapped by Norman Osborn, who reveals, who's revealed himself to be the Green Goblin. Uh, Pete, Pete stalls him, mentioning Harry and playing with his emotions to get him to talk. <laughs> Babes, he's insane. He's got no emotions. Insane in the membrane. Norman tells... Insane in the brain! <laughs> <laughs> Norman tells how he worked constantly to provide and always paid more attention to work than his son. Yeah, sh- I mean, yeah, sh- hello? Yeah, shut up, here's a bike. <laughs> we, we pretty much get that scene in this issue. Shut up, here's a bike. He reveals how Professor Strom only borrowed money from a shared account, but Norman... Ca- I mean, his wife faked, his, faked her death to get away from him. I'm just saying, oh, like, how yeah. bad? And he's got money. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, before his supposed death and he flees to Europe. Oh, yeah, not wife's in Europe. Yeah, come on. <laughs> That's where he got the idea from. He's like, I'll just be in Switzerland with oh, amnesia. Oh, please, to get away from him, and then, oh, I gave birth and, to this. And little young Harry? Oh, I don't blame her. Listen. Uh, uh, he reveals how Professor Strom only borrowed money from a shared account, but Norman called the police, reporting it as theft, leaving the company in his hands. Uh, Norman continues saying Strom had left formulas behind, and he decided to research them. As he was working on one, it exploded and hospitalized him. Oh, oh, so you weren't doing human experimentation. Okay. Okay. It was a bad cook. I mean, oh my god. So they, that, <laughs> Definitely couldn't be Brian Cranston then. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, think about it. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, so that goblin formula is crystal meth, right? I'm pretty sure. I mean, the, the dress up like this, flying broomstick. Come on. Come on. Pumpkin bombs? Like, yeah. Oh my god, this, yeah. This this is making sense. Yeah, this is crystal meth. Alright. Um this this transformation changed him and he planned to use his company's resources to become a super criminal. You're already a billionaire. You're technically a super criminal anyway. You're welcome, no. Well he well <laughs> well he wanted to, well he wanted to be a fancy man. Come on. <laughs> uh yeah. I'm not a fancy man. Norman is. Purple and green. It's dead giveaway exactly sorry hulk <laughs> his transformation changed him he planned to use his company's res- yeah uh at home aunt may is worried sick over peter not calling her and anna watson calls in dr bromwell meanwhile Pe- petty betty meanwhile betty brant is in a train station and realizing she must return to new york and face everyone but unsure how oh yeah wasn't it last issue p tells ned leads like yeah you can have her yeah yeah that bitch be crazy ned- no you can have her he's like i'm still gonna propose I'll take your sloppy seconds. Whoa! <laughs> oh. I mean, Flash did too, so whatever, you know. Well, <laughs> so I guess, so I guess we know. Uh, well, yes, yeah, so all these, all these uh, unsuspecting men running around. I guess we know where the real, what the real Winkler device was, don't we, kids? <laughs> don't we, kids? Superior. Let's puss. say it had a 
She had a firm grip on reality. Hey, oh. <laughs> Superior puss. Put him in the put him in the brainwashing machine. Superior <laughs> puss. Uh, you, you know you, you know how many times the Wolf Hellfire's brainwashed men into a dinner? <laughs> Come on. Uh. No, no, that comes afterwards. Hey, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Superior puss. Uh, I thought you were done with them after that. <laughs> depends, depends. Kind of, kind of getting short on supply here, so you know. Oh, yeah, you gotta start moving more calculated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. You're done. Let's go eat. Come on, Mama's hungry. Uh. Pete is still working on the steel bonds, and the goblin recounts when Spider-Man has fought him and skews them as victories. He finishes his story and frees Pete to fight him on even terms. Mistake! Yes. As they fight, the goblin pulls out his stun bombs. I need this. An electrical whip. I need this so bad. And finally, a goblin cannon. <laughs> hey <laughs> That's what they call Betty Britt! Oh! <laughs> No, that's a gobble gobble can. Gobble gobble. <laughs> gobble gobble. S -s 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 Sausage! As Spider Man delivers a kick, the goblin goes into a mixture of live wires and chemicals and a fire starts. Ah, This is why Raimi did it better, just saying. We did it. What, a goblin glider to the balls? <laughs> to the chest! I don't know, I'm gonna get nailed in the nutsack to me. <laughs> I mean, he, he gave birth to Harry. I totally would do that, too. Just make sure you're not creating no more demon spawn. <laughs> oh, God. I'm not going to kill you. I'm just going to fix you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that my new slogan? Oh, <laughs> nice. I'm going to need that on a shirt, Phil. Okay. <laughs> Spider-Man rushes, uh, rushes over, not wanting to kill him. But Norman doesn't know where he is or why he's in costume. Ah, the first amnesia is always the always the best, kid. You you always remember your first amnesia. Selective amnesia. <laughs> That's what all rich people have. If we're gonna be honest. Oh yeah. You always remember your first amnesia, kids. Not wanting to destroy his reputation or Harry's feelings, he quickly changes out of his costume for the police to take him to a hospital. Uh, Peter rushes home, and Doctor Bromwell has just sedated Aunt May. Thank you. Aunt May begins to take care of Peter's fever, and Harry visits his dad in the hospital. Right. Avenge me! <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I forgot. You were, you're, you're exactly correct. Yes, Norman states that his wife Emily had died when Harry was still young. However, unknown to Norman at this time, Emily actually faked her death. This will not be revealed until many years later in Amazing Spider-Man 800. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's like all the retcons, boobs. Yeah, so hard to keep up. I just honestly, I just need like a big book of Spider-Man retcons. Like they need to make that oh, hardcover, of course. Volume one, volume two, <laughs> <laughs> volume three. So many. It's so many. I mean, we have so many issues of Spider-Man. So many books. So many writers. Like it, it's fine. That's just the nature of comics. I'm okay with it. But sometimes it's just really ridiculous. Like this whole thing they're doing with Norman Osborn right now, absolutely ridiculous. Unneeded. Thing. Let yeah. a bad man be a bad man. That is what Marvel has the most trouble with. Well, I think we're finally getting there because with that little giggle is any indication. Yes. Oh, man. Is this on the app? We need to cover these because uh, although Norman Osborn is stricken with selective amnesia here, his memories ultimately return in Spectacular Spider-Man Magazine number two, which I think there was only two of those. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, if not, you know, I can I can hook you up with a copy. Oh thank, oh thank you, man. Yes, yeah, so yeah, we. Oh yeah, that might. Yeah, only two in existence, uh, cause those things are. I mean, like you just don't go fucking around with the size of shit, man. Hey, oh. listen, listen. I have, I have, you know, I have my boxes for my wizard magazines and my Fangoria and and come like just, you just can't go messing with the aspect ratio. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, but, yeah. comic book nerds are. Oh, Every single comic book nerd has OCD. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, we do. Yeah, black label. <laughs> mm, yes. Luckily, my guy carries like big magazine uh, ba yeah. bags of boards. Otherwise, but it's just but... like, Ugh. It's like I already know. have my bad boards and magazines for the year. Every year at the beginning, I buy a big bulk match. I mean, yeah, that's how do you think all mine are filed? All the black labels are filed together. Yeah. Yes, they have to be. Oh. Otherwise, it's. You know, chaos. It's, it's, it's I tick in, inducing. It really is. <laughs> Dogs and cats living in harmony. 
Exactly. No, I, I promise you, don't don't take this the wrong way. If you're a comic book nerd, I, I promise you, you have it. Just the smallest amount of OCD. You do. Small? Just small amount? What are you talking about? Well, it depends on the person, but like, it, can, it varies. It's a spectrum. <laughs> nice. Uh... But yeah, no, 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 no. I, I can't. Like, I like the idea of Norman. It's just been poorly executed, and like every time they try to fix something, it makes it worse. I guess, and that that's the, just the hilarity that ensues with like the snowball rolling downhill at that point. You just you just have to just kind of like sit back and watch the train wreck at that point. Well, again, the twenty amnesias, and then they they finally do kill him, but then twenty years later they bring him back and like we need someone big to be behind the whole clone saga. <gasps> I know, let's bring back Norman. Which was their mistake. Like they should have came up with a new person. It should have been Betty. But you know, exactly yes. That 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 that's what we're really, or even worse, Aunt May, and that's why Uncle Ben is Mephisto, and that's why he faked his death to get away from her because she's even more evil than he is. No, they. I sh- mean, those are the only two things you can do at that point. They should have left Aunt May dead because remember, Demetrius yeah. did a great death uh, issue. They should have left her dead. But they no. blew it. <laughs> Just like Betty. No, I uh, but. Yeah, no, Betty should have been the mastermind because, like, even, like, towards the end of the Clone Saga, like, well, beginning and the end of the Clone Saga, like, Ben Rally was even starting to fall for Betty. So, again, it would have worked. It could have worked, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Like, they've had all these opportunities, but, like, I, I don't know. I couldn't get Peter, so I <laughs> I manipulated... Settle for his clone. I manipulated Miles Warren into creating a clone I could bang. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like something I would do, but... <laughs> A cloning is a little outside my league. Robotics, I, I, yeah, it, it's a little expensive, but it's more doable than cloning. How I'm you, not China. How did you pay Miles? How did you pay Ma, the jackal, Betty? Well, uh. <laughs> when you're a woman, you don't really need a wallet. Superior puss. <laughs> well, some kind I of. I mean, a coin purse, but not a wallet. A certain kind of wallet. Yeah. Superior puss. <laughs> a superior puss or a prison wallet, you know? <laughs> yeah. Or a prison purse, you know? <laughs> It's in his prison purse. Or hers. <laughs> oh. oh, just the, the, the messy legacy that I, of Norman Osborne. It just makes me laugh every time. It's just, just the goblin <laughs> legacy in overall. But, like, this is where it starts. And, you know, no Tino shade to Stan. You know, we love him. May he rest in power. Yes. But I feel like he never really knew what he wanted to do with the villains. I think, it, I think it, was all, it was a bunch. Oh, let's see if this works. Let's see if this works. You know. Yeah. It works, and again, I mean, he enjoyed it. But again, if we don't get a Norman Osborn, we never get a winner like Jason McIndale. Eventually, I would be okay with that. Thing. Oh my! <gasps> what we do every November, little Hellfire? <laughs> we find something. God, every hob, every hob go- or every every gobble gobble month would be hairy or something. Normie with a symbiote. <laughs> oh God! Don't worry. We're worse than Alan. Oh. Symbiote. <laughs> gobble gobble. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, gobble, would do, gobble. we would do something Osborne based, I'm sure. Yes. There's enough fodder there for sure. And just the Osborne family itself. <laughs> so, but yeah, I, you know, Norman, he's, he's, I, I like, the Green Goblin is iconic, but Norman isn't iconic. Do you know what I mean? Do you understand? Yeah, yes. <laughs> you understand the words coming out of my mouth? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, that, that's been my biggest thing. It's like, Norman, womp, womp. Green Goblin, hell yes. You know, like. And then they kind of give him, like, that whole where he doesn't remember thing. And, like, ah, it's just weird. It's like, let a bad guy be a bad guy. Let him stand in his truth. Like, that has been my biggest thing with Norman Osborn. They just refuse to let him stand in his truth. Bring him back full evil and bring back that marriage, Samwell. It's what we've been waiting for for, like, two decades at this point, so. <laughs> I just don't know why. They, they know at this point that people want that marriage back. And they're just like. Like, look how well Superman did when he got married and had a kid. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Again and again, we have enough other spider people that you can do. Peter is the married, you know, the married guy, the father. Yeah, it's like, why'd you do that to Ben? <laughs> like, you had the perfect opportunity during the Beyond shit, and you just, yes. you just couldn't manage to stick the landing. Could have your cake and eat it too. Ben could be the single Dayton guy. He's a literal copy of Peter. You know, you could have it both ways. Yeah. Anywho. Yeah. That's it. That's 250. Yes. So, hope you like it. Stay for another 250, probably. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Feels like, no, definitely. No problem. I, well, I mean, only 50 episodes until 300, though. <laughs> I know. 
All right, but uh, yes, next time again, they got pushed back a week, but yes, the boys will return. The bad baby. Don't you get them back to back? <laughs> no, 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 no. It'll be the first the the first week of November and the last week of November. So, uh, so but no, next time, yes, the boys return as we cover Scarlet Spider seven through nine, featuring Kane, and then yes, the two well the two episodes in between Lilith is our actual. Hob gobble yes. gobble month with uh, yes. Jason Mackendale. Mackendale! <laughs> which the first episode will be Spectacular Spider Man 161 through 163. And the second episode will be Spider Man 46 through 49. And if you're like, that's not enough Hob gobble gobble for me, check out Marvel Tales those weeks also, kids. Because week. Justin wants to be me so bad! Oh! <laughs> kidding i love justin he does the he does the lord's work y'all know that you wish you've got you wish you've gotten as much d as he has come on <laughs> so, true, so true <laughs> you, still trying to catch up you wish you wish you've baked as many biscuits as he has <laughs> <laughs> i know he's laughing his head off right now my favorite biscuit <laughs> all right kids and then yes then the the round out Nove- they start november and they end november the bad babysitters club will be back to cover ah, we'll do the crossover minimum carnage nobody oh. told dg chai just <laughs> alpha and omega scarlet spider 10 and 11 and venom 26 and 27 oh you're not dg chai chester if you don't hate carnage <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, oh my god! Can you imagine? They would never. They'd never. But can you imagine? Marvel's like, yeah. Can, can you do another book for us? Yeah, Carnage book. Oh, he'd do it. He'd Carnage! It. <laughs> no, he, he would have Carnage just getting tortured. He go, you know, Mephisto grabs him in issue he'd one. Bring just, back the surgeon. <laughs> just tortures him in hell. Search general. I wish. What do you mean? It's too bloody. You have me writing a Carnage book. Damn it. All right, speaking of Chichester, we got to go because yeah, we're going to be talking to him soon. Check out Chichester Chats episode 25 coming soon, kids, which you could get early access to if you join our Patreon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so uh, send your thoughts what, Send your thoughts on all the upcoming Spider-Man or any of the episodes. Uh, email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can find all things Capes and Lunatics, episodes, social media, merchandise. Yeah, you can, you can get some merch. Get, get yourself a damn t-shirt. And, of course, the aforementioned Patreon. Or, you know, a tumbler for your drinks because it's nobody's business what's in your cup. And I Not be- even your employer, kids. Or I believe they still have uh, phone cases because we know we all everyone has a phone now. So, come on. Uh, and of course, like I said, the Patreon where if you want to get early access to Chichester Chats and at least Be one bullied at least have your own drops and at least one special a month yes uh you can find that uh we can find all of that at uh tube space thought io slash capes and lunatics podcast network that's tube space thought io slash capes and lunatics podcast network all right and the number one ranter on patreon Lil hellfire where can people find you uh graining oh, and you- up so if you nerds want to hang out with your favorite internet granny, you can find me on Facebook like a true grandparent. Friend me there. Or you can find me on threads and or Instagram at your favorite internet granny. Uh, G-R-A-N-N-I-E. Yeah. The only sack I want to be hit in the face with. Money. Again, the Patreon kid. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Spread them out. Uh, and again. Betty's like, we're doing me now? Oh, hey oh. Lubricated eels are the best. And again, the whole Osborne clan. The whole family can suck it. <laughs> and also, your mother's a whore! Oh my, no Frank Miller, but okay. Your mother's a whore! Uh, um, we talked about Harry's mom. Oh my god, I can't believe, one of my favorite Norman uh, moments, I can't believe Dan Slott wrote it. Uh, the last regular issue of that first volume of Sp- Superior Spider-Man, uh, uh, Norman thinks he's a uh, punk in auto, and he's, you know, he's like, ah, you know, you're done, you're done, and Peter just turns around and goes, yeah, well, at least I still have my dignity. I never carried a man purse. And <laughs> Norman just gets a shock look on his face. He's like, you, it's you. <laughs> I thought you were dead. Surprise, bitch. <laughs> it's a European carry-off. <laughs> uh, all right, kids. Thank you for joining us. Now we got boys wearing crossbow. Crossbody bags and fanny packs. Yes. 
Now we start the now we start the march to the three hundred mention of uh, Gwen going off that bridge, kids. <laughs> All right, Senator Fox, what should we do for three hundred? But until then, swing on back. Thwip, thwip, blondes and bridges, blondes and bridges. The little hellfire story. <laughs> Jake Conway story. Hey. <laughs>